to the second episode of Cooking the Torah, or whatever we're calling it. Uh, today is the first of Kislev, so Polish Tov, and we are going to be cooking a Moroccan lentil soup, which is uh, connected with the Parsha Tokot, which we'll be reading this week. So welcome to anyone who's here, welcome to anyone who's going to watch the video later. And uh, this recipe has um, pretty basic ingredients, pretty simple, but it is very delicious. So oh, my name is Nina Korotin, Executive Director of Temple Beth Israel. So can, can, can people hear me? Who, anyone who's here? Can you hear me? Okay. okay, great, good. I do have my mask on for safety reasons. So. Everything basically goes in the pot. In the pot. And then you cook it. If you have a pressure cooker, you can make this recipe in a pressure cooker. Uh, I don't, but uh, if you do it that way, it takes about 35 to 40 minutes. And otherwise, it takes about an hour and a half to cook the lentils, depending on what kind of lentils you use. So let us start putting things in the pot. First of all, we have two cups of lentils. Um, I pre-measured these, so you just have to trust me. But um, the lentils that I like to use, if you're in here in Eugene, I know that they have them at Market Choice. I'm looking it up on my phone because I took a picture of it last time I was there. And I had it right here, and now it's gone. Uh, they are low tannin lentils and Shasta yellow zero tannin lentils. Very delicious. Okay, here we go. Lentils. I think we're going to pot over here. I'll put it on the stove when we're ready to rock and roll. Thank you to Jody Kirkner, my lovely assistant, who is running the tech today. So we have two cups of lentils. Then we have two or three grated tomatoes. Now, when I told Jovi about this recipe, when we told her about the grated tomatoes, she said, how do you grate tomatoes? A very good question. What I do is I freeze them ahead of time. These are kind of hard, actually. I should have taken them out a while ago. But um, So these tomatoes are tomatoes that we grew in our garden. And they're kind of the, to be honest, they're a little bit of the drinks. Leftover ones, but you can use any kind of tomato. You can also you can also um, just use canned tomatoes and you know grind them up or put them in your cuisine. So two to three tomatoes. This makes it so that they really cook down very well. And, um, sorry, it's a little messy. So though we're going to two or three already, I'll put it on the other one. Okay. I'll put it on the one for now. It does make your hands kind of cold. Chopped. 
pre-chopped because my eyes tend to water a lot and I didn't want to be crying on the meat. So there onions. Okay. And then three cloves of garlic, finely chopped or pressed. This garlic is actually a big kind of elephant garlic that Dolphy grew. And um, we are not big garlic lovers, I must confess. So uh, this is a little bit more mild and also a little bit more gigantic, so we don't use three. And so this is chopped. And everything's going to cook down quite a bit. So can you hear me, Nina? Yeah. Hi. I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Okay. It's so difficult with the mask, I know. How many, I, I can look later, but how many onions did you chop? That's one medium onion. One. Okay. Actually, that's not even the whole thing. It was a huge onion that I got at the last farmer's market uh, over here in the neighborhood. So, one onion. Thank you. Three cloves of garlic. Glad you're here. Sorry you can't hear me. Sometimes I can. And it took my, my computer is sometimes slower than it usually is. So it took me a while to get here. That's why I was a few minutes late. Nina, I have a question. This is Bernie. That, that huge giant garlic. I mean, can one get that? at market of choice or in a grocery store? Or is that really uh, from gardens? You get elephant garlic at That's grocery from, stores. That, those huge giant garlics. Yeah, and it's a little, like I said, it's a little more mild, which is why I'm okay putting this much in. But you can use regular garlic you, if you yeah, like garlic. Yeah, just three regular garlic. Uh, okay. Cloves. Three regular cloves of garlic. Okay. Also, this is what I have. So. Okay, so there we go. Finally chopped. Good enough. In the pot. Must smell good. <laughs> the ingredient is four tablespoons chopped fresh parsley or cilantro. We have parsley in the garden still, so I'm using that. I really like cilantro. Some people don't. But, so be it. So, uh, while I'm chopping this, does anyone know why Jacob was making soup? Why was he making lots of soup? What does the Midrash say? Don't Google it. Just... <laughs> why are you making soup? Is that the question? Why was Jacob? Why Jacob was making lentil soup? But the story, the reason why we're making lentil soup is because of this week's parsha, which is Toldot, in which he's, uh, you know, Esau sells his birthright for a bowl of lentil soup. But why was Jacob making it to Maybe. sell it to you? <laughs> To trade it. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, this is what the Midrash does. Maybe lentil soup because his father Isaac was in mourning after the passing of his father, Abraham. So there's a tradition of giving mourners round food. So lentils are round. So that's partly why. And why round? Well, there's a whole idea of the, the cycle. Saying round soup or round food or brown? Round. Round. R-O-U-N-D, round. Okay, so, um, and that there's also the idea that the round is like a wheel. So you know, death eventually rolls around to everyone. So that's also part of it. And then there's another idea that the round shape has no mouth. 
It has no opening. In the same way that a mourner does not speak. So because it's so consumed with grief. So that's one of the teachings of why lentil soup. And lentils, unlike some other, I was reading that lentils, unlike some other seeds, don't have, or some other beans and legumes, they don't have, like on most beans, they have that little kind of opening, that little kind of nub, and lentils don't have that. So, okay, there's the parsley. I'm not measuring it because this is not that okay, but it should be um, four tablespoons. Okay, then next is cumin, which is, you know, like Moroccan, Moroccan food tends to have a lot of cumin in it. These are, what did I say? Two and, two and a half teaspoons. Order. On. Of course, they don't fit in the thing. So. One. I always like a little extra cumin. Anyone? Speaking of round food and mourning and the cycle of life, does any do we do this practice here? I don't think I've seen it, but we we did it in, in, my, in the whole country of Long Island. <laughs> uh, you know, there would be you know water for the mourners to wash their hands. You know, for the people that went to the graveside to wash their hands, and they out, you know out right outside the door. Mm -hmm. A pitcher and towels and stuff, and, but then also hard-boiled eggs were served. Yes. 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 Yeah. Did we do that here? I don't remember seeing that at places, but maybe I just didn't look. Look. Some people do it. It depends. Yeah. So two and a half teaspoons of paprika, one and two, and some people you can use a spicy paprika. You know, some paprika is hotter than others. I personally am not a spice fan, so I don't do that. And um, yeah, and that's then, just regular paprika, right? Not smoked paprika, right? Yeah, regular paprika. And then the recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons of ginger. Okay. Um, I don't like ginger. I know, not. Not cool, but the reality. So I don't put ginger in mine, and it's fine, but you can. And then a half a teaspoon of pepper. I don't eat pepper. <laughs> I don't either. Perfect. All right, very I don't eat some matzo brie <laughs> for some reason. And then salt, two teaspoons of salt. Um, I go easy on the salt, at least initially. You can always add salt when you eat it. So I'm actually just going to put one and a little bit. You know, we have a low sodium. Nina, would you repeat what you said about the ginger? You can use ginger or not use ginger. It's up to oh, you. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, last ingredient is a third of a cup of olive oil. Which, uh, you know, any kind of olive oil that you like. Is good. I'm measure that out and pull it in. Okay, that is it on the ingredients, folks. Then you need to add eight cups of water, which I have right here. I like to uh, use. We actually have a filter in the office, so I use the filtered water, which is why I'm doing it from there. So eight cups of water. And you can always add water to it if it's getting like too thick as it's cooking down. How many does this serve? Serves. Four as an entree. It's, it's a lot of soup. I mean, that's a yeah. big pack and bowl of soup if you serve it before. So now we're going to move it to the stove. 
and turn on the stove. Just, uh, I get it boiling, and then once it's boiling, I can turn it down to a low simmer with the lid on. And it's like I said, it's going to take about an hour and a half. So until the lentils are soft, and you just want to stir it occasionally, obviously, so it does not bubble very hot. How many cups of lentils did you use? Two cups of lentils. And uh, while while we're hanging out, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, grate another tomato. But um, so then when it's cooked, <laughs> we're using the super brew. She's already showing. She's like she already has some, like at the professional shows. This is more for sport. Okay, so this is the soup. Oh, yeah. Now, you can also, sometimes what I'll do is I'll put some, cut up some spinach or some other kind of greens, kale, whatever, and put it in before I serve it. But uh, give it a little bit of a, you know. Greenery. Now I'm going to take off my mask and eat some. <laughs> Taste it. So you can see how delicious it is. Oh, look, I've had an eye on a clam shell. Clam here. 